And on this video, I'm going to be giving you a full tour of the menu and all the settings of the Red Tiger F7N dual dash cam. Now, I have previously reviewed this dash cam on my channel. If you have not seen that full review video, I'll put a link to that video in the description down below. On this video, I'm going to focus on my preferred settings for this dash cam. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, including dash cam reviews and cool car gadgets, make sure to subscribe by hitting the button down below to see more videos like this. I also want to remind you that I have placed a link in the description description down below to this dash cam if you want to look at it further or acquire one for yourself. Now let's start with the power button on the side right here. The power button also switches the views if I tap on it quickly. So now we are now seeing the front view of the camera. If I tap on it quickly again, now it shows us the rear view of the camera. If I tap that one more time, now we have a split screen where we can see the front and the rear view at the same time. And we also have three buttons on the right hand side. Let's start with the very first one. If I type that button, we automatically flag the file that we're currently recording. In case we saw something interesting and want to find that later, that's what this button can be used for. But also the top button can also be used to turn on the Wi-Fi by pushing and holding it down. As you can see now, the Wi-Fi has been enabled and we can see the password to access it. And we can turn the Wi-Fi off again by holding down that button one more time. But now let's talk about the button on the bottom. This button allows us to stop the recording. Notice how we stop recording. And if I press that one more time, we can re-enable recording one more time. But also we know that this dashcam is recording audio all the time. However, if I wanted to keep recording video but eliminate the audio, I can hold that button and notice that the microphone has been turned off off if we wanted to have a top secret conversation. Now I can hold that button one more time until the audio comes on again and we are now recording audio one more time. But now let's go over to the settings and that is with the button in the middle. If I press that we can access the menu. And to navigate the menu we have an up button, an ok button, a down button and a go back button. Now we'll start with resolution. I'm going to hit ok on that one. And you can see that we have four potential choices. We can run a single camera which is the front camera at 2160 or 1440 or we can run dual cameras front and back the front at 2160 and the back at 1080 or the front at 1440 or the back at 1080. I leave mine in the highest which is 2160 by 1080 and to go back to the front menu I can just hit OK on that. Next we're gonna go to audio I'm gonna hit OK and here's where we can tell the dashcam whether we want the audio to be recorded and again we can choose whether that option is on or off and then I'm gonna hit OK to go back to the front. Then we have the date stamp and this is the information that you see in the bottom of the video. If you don't want to have that date and time recorded on your video you can turn that off. I leave mine on all the time so I'm going to hit OK. And the next option is going to be loop recording. Now there is no right or wrong setting for this dash cam. All dash cams record in loop recording and here you can tell it how long the segments of video should be. 1 minute segments, 3 minute segments or 5 minute segments. I like 3 minute segments. That seems to be a nice in between. Then we have the G sensor. We know that this dash cam can automatically detect when your car gets hit because it senses that movement and here's what we can tell the dash can whether we want that sensor to be completely off or whether we want to have that sensor in low sensitivity, medium or high sensitivity. I don't like high because it creates too many false alerts when it thinks I'm crashing if I'm just going over a speed bump. So I normally leave this on low but I would recommend experimenting because this will vary from car to car. And next we have the fatigue reminder. This dash cam can actually remind you when you're driving for a long period of time to take a break. And here you can set how, at what interval do you want to take a break one two or three or four hours i leave mine enough next is the speed watermark some people don't want to have their speed shown on the video that is being recorded some people do want to have that speed shown i think it's an important piece of evidence so i'll always leave my speed on then we have the gps stamp this is the same thing as the speed setting some people prefer not to have their coordinates recorded to show where they've been i like to have mine on all the time because again i think that adds transparency and it's an important piece of evidence. Then we can have the speed units change between kilometers an hour or miles per hour depending on where you're located. Next is the GPS info and this just allows us to see if the GPS antenna is working. We're not really going to change any settings in there so we'll skip that one. The next one is important the rear camera flip. If we recall the rear camera you can see how the right now it looks nice and straight but if I were to install this camera upside down 
Notice how the image now is upside down. By changing that setting, we can flip that image. So notice how it's upside down. I'm gonna go back into the menu by pressing the menu option, and I'm gonna go down here until I locate the rear camera flip, hit okay, and we're gonna correct that upside down camera. And as you can see, the rear camera is now in the correct side up. So this is a way to cor correct for any kind of unusual rear camera mounting location. Next we have the app and here's where we can scan this barcode to download the app and be able to access all the functions of this dash cam through an app. The next option is gonna be Wi-Fi and this allows us to turn on or off the Wi-Fi. As I showed you earlier, that can also be done with the button under here by holding it down until it turns on. So it's just another way to access it. And then we have the language option. Here's where we can change between several languages if we wanted to change the default English language. Then we have the time format where we can display in military time 24 hours or AM PM which is 12 hour time. Next we have the date and time. Now this information is going to be automatically pulled by the GPS. However, we can manually enter that information in here if desired. Now let's go down to the next page and we can also change the time zone. Now it is important to tell this dashcam where we we are located, otherwise it's going to set the incorrect date and time. So we want to put the correct time zone in here. Next is frequency. This is something you want to set at 60 hertz if you're inside of the United States or 50 hertz if you are in Europe. What this does, it reduces the amount of flickering of any lights that you may be recording. Now click tone. You guys hear this tone? Well, we can turn that tone off by going in here. I actually always turn that off. I find that kind of annoying. So now it's completely gone. Screen. We can and also said how long before the screen turns off. The dash cam keeps recording, but we can select between 10 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes, but I have my screen on all the time, so I like to leave that in off. Next is the parking mode option. However, we can only access that menu if the dash cam is hardwired. And if it was hardwired, we get two choices in there, regular parking mode, which records when the car gets hit, or parking mode that works in time lapse where it's recording all the time. The next option is gonna be format and this is gonna be convenient if we wanna blank out the entire memory card in one shot. But if for some reason we change the settings and we don't like what we did, we can always restore the settings back to its original defaults. And finally, in the version option, we can see what current firmware we are running on our dash cam. But well, going back to the center button, we know if I tap that real quick, it'll give us the menu. But if I press and hold down on this button, Button, it is actually going to change the mode of the dash cam to picture mode. So now we can take a snapshot of whatever we're looking at by pressing on the button right here. And if I press this one more time, we are now on the playback menu where we can see that picture or we can see the videos that we have previously recorded and we can play them back. And if we wanted to delete a current picture or video that we are looking at, I can press on this and I can select delete that video or picture or I can choose to delete all of them in one shot. Now I can go back to the menu by pressing this back button and then holding this one more time and then it's going to return us back to the main screen where we're normally recording. And now that you know how to use the Red Tiger F7N to its full potential, you may be wondering about how to use the app. And I have you covered as I have a video coming up where I show you the app and all of its menu and features and settings. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys don't miss that video. And remember, I placed a link to this dash cam in the description down below if you want to look at it further. If you guys have any other questions regarding the F7N dash cam, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.